Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain. I'm here to teach beginners how to get started in China painting and also to encourage those of you that are experienced painters to continue painting right along with us. I do have a, a live show on Facebook that uh, you can go to every Wednesday at 10 a.m. and I'm on Eastern Daylight Time. I live in Michigan. Um, to see what we're working on. We're always working on things that I try to keep simple enough for the most part so that a beginner can do them. And today we're gonna to talk about maintenance on uh, your palette, because as you can see, my palette here, let me just show it to you. I use a very large palette and it's kind of messy. <laughs> and when it gets messy like this, if it's been, you know, when you're painting, it's open and it's in front of you, um, it can really uh, collect dust and, anything that's in the air. So uh, you can get brush hairs, dust, and from time to time, your paints get very, the longer they're there, the tackier they get. And so it's not always easy um, to clean your palette. So I'm gonna angle you down so you can see what I'm doing and see what all is involved in the process. All right, you probably want to clean your palette at least every uh, month. Um, more often, if you use it more often, it just depends. And so um, you, what you'll need for that is a palette knife. You're going to also need a tile. This tile is where you're probably going to be putting your paints while you're cleaning off that row on your palette. You're going to need paper towel. Uh, I fold my paper towel up and it's uh, four thicknesses that way. I have two sheets together. I use Viva paper towel. It, it doesn't have as much dust on the smooth side, so it's a good one to use. And I'm gonna be using mineral spirits to clean my palette. And then you're gonna need a number of Kleenex. So I always keep a, a, a whole box of Kleenex close by to wipe off the palette and kind of as I work. So the first thing you're gonna do, let me show you here. These are labeled. I have the names above each of these, and I have a grid. So the first thing, if you have a, um, a uh, clear glass palette, because this is simply a, a box, metal box, with a piece of glass in it, you're gonna wanna take some typing paper, and you're gonna wanna draw a grid so that you know where your paints are and slide it underneath the clear glass. Now, if you don't have a clear glass palette, they also have milk glass palettes, then you really don't need to do that. Um, uh, but you can draw a grid right on the milk glass. The only problem is it's, it's gonna keep coming off as you paint. So most people who have milk glass simply put the names on the top of each of the areas. Okay, so I am a, I'm gonna start with the top row and I'm simply going to lift my paint and put it on my tile and then wipe my knife very clean. Now that's white. I don't need to label it because it's the only white on my palette so I know what it is. The next one I'm gonna take is a yellow. So I'm gonna put it next to that and I'm just gonna put some initials using a Sharpie. These work really well. I'm just going to take and put initials. That's Trenton Ivory. So I'm gonna put like Tren Ive, just so I know what it is, because a lot of these are gonna look alike and you're gonna get them side by side over on your tile. Um, I don't have, here you can see, I don't have a lot of canary yellow. I don't use it very often. So I am not going to move that over because it's all dusty. I'm going to move over the egg. I'm not gonna move this one over and I will move over the Albert. Those are the, the colors that are large and um, are worth saving, but some of these are not worth saving because they just have too much junk in them. A dust and dirt and, and it, it's a smidge. It's not even worth saving. So I'm gonna write egg up here and Albert. Okay. Then I'm gonna go to my next row and do yellow brown. Now, most people do not stagger their colors as I do. Um, when I did my grid on here, I found that it was important to have space in between the colors so I wasn't always getting my hand or my brush in them. 
So I do every other one. Most people make bigger grids and they do every one. And I'm going to take, this is pumpkin. Pumpkin, I'm saving. Now, it, it's I didn't have much there, but it's one of those that's hard to find. It, they don't make it anymore. And I happen to have some, and so I'm going to save it. Make sure you wipe off your knife because you don't want to contaminate the next color. It's yellow, and it's a sunflower yellow. Okay, so I'm going to put sunflower by it. My yellow brown, again, too small to bother. The okra, I've got a ton of it, so I'm going to take that and move that over. That's a golden okra. Baker's brown, I use it occasionally, so I will move that over. And Southwest brown, I'm going to move over. Okay. And I'm also going to move over burnt orange because I like that. And it's a lot like Southwest Brown and Auburn. Don't erase the names on here until you have the, um, the names on your tile because you might forget what they are. And um, they're going to look a lot alike next to each other. And you're going to have trouble telling which one's which. Let me just show you now that I've got them over here. Here's my tile. See how similar a lot of these look? It's important that you try to um, label them because you will forget what they are. And then I, let, um, I have reflected light here. I'm gonna move that over. It's only a little bit. But another reason that I like to move them over is because um, some of them I forget that I have them and that I can use them, especially if it's a new uh, color. And so I move it over just so that I remember that I use that color, that I have that color and I should try to use it for a while. Okay, and the last one here is warm brown gray. Okay. So now, I don't have a lot more room on my tile. I'm going to take a tissue, I'm going to dip it in my mineral spirits, and I'm just going to wipe across the top here, getting all the labels off, all the colors off, really cleaning it. Now, I'm doing this in portions. If you have a small palette, let me show you a small palette. This is a small palette that I have, like this then you would do the whole palette at one time. But with a big palette like this, I do it in sections so that I just have to use one tile to clean it, and then I can go back up and I'm all set. Okay, so I've got that top section done. You take part of this just to dry the top section off. You don't want the mineral spirits mixing in with your paints. And you're gonna go back with your Sharpie and you're gonna start writing. Now, some of these cases, and I don't believe the little one does, let me check, no. Some of these cases in the cover have little knobs sticking down so that it keeps your paint away from the lid, the underside of the lid. And most of the time, those are in the four corners. So check your case. If you have that, stay away from putting paint in the four corners because if you put paint in those corners, it's always going to, the lid's always going to have that paint on there and it's just going to get difficult. So I usually start at least one in and I write the name at the top. So this is going to be white and I write all the names before I put it back so that I'm not necessarily getting back into my paint. White, black, this is Trenton Ivory. You may want to abbreviate some of these just so that you don't have to guess about what they are or and they don't take up as much room when you write them. And this is yellow brown. And then I'm going to skip those two because it's too close to the corner. Now when I come down here, it's not a problem, but I'm going to start here. I'm going to leave space because you're going to be using other colors, like as you paint, you may change from one kind of yellow to another yellow, and it would be helpful for you to have a few extra spaces so you can add them to your palette. I'm going to put pumpkin here, and now I can write above the square, 
And I'm going to put, the next one is Sunflower. The next one is Golden Okra. Next one will be Baker's. Baker's Brown. And then I'm going to do Southwest Brown. And then I'm going to do Burnt Orange. Okay. So I've written those in. Close up your pen. Use a fine point and see how I've written those in. I've written them right at the top up here because I have no choice. But then I start coming down a little. And in between, I can write the name above where I'm going to actually put the paint. Then I go back over to my palette. And I start adding back in my colors. White. Wipe off your knife very well on your towel after that. Trenton Ivory. Wipe it off again. You don't want to contaminate these. Egg. Albert Yellow. Yellow Brown. And don't make the piles too high. You see the lid? You only have about a half an inch there. If you make your pile too high, what will happen is, and I'll show you on this small one, it'll stick to the lid. And most people, when they are painting, take the lid off and put it underneath their palette. If you do that and it has paint on it and you haven't noticed that, you'll get it on the bottom of your palette and then everywhere you move your palette is gonna have paint on the bottom. So that's another little tip, uh, one that I only recently learned because I do like to pile my stuff kind of high and I'm not gonna do that as much anymore. Um, I had that happen and I couldn't figure out why I had okra all over everything and then I found that it was because it was too high on here. Uh, we're doing Baker's next. Southwest. Burnt orange. Okay, and then I would take my tile and I'm going to clean off where I had those colors on my tile, just like this. And then I'm going to dip in a little mineral spirits and I'm going to get rid of the the names that I wrote on here. You notice I'm holding it this direction. If the mineral spirits drips, I want it to drip away from my paints that I have still have on my tile. Okay. Now I can go back and I can start and lift the next row and then the row after that. Um, when I'm all done, I will come down here to the very bottom where I don't have any paint right now. And I will also clean all this real well. Because the last thing you want is to have a lot of dust and dirt on here. And then I will cover up my palette. Each time you paint, the other thing you need to do, you see here how I have these smears. Each time you paint, before you start to paint the next time, go through, put your finger in your Kleenex, and simply lift the smudge. So let me show you what I did here. Okay, I've got a smudge right here, big smudge under the shading green. I'm gonna put my finger in the Kleenex, and I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna lift all that that's there. Okay, because I, before you start painting, you want to get rid of any dust that's on your palette. And the dust on your palette will gather in those areas where you've used your brush to pull out the paint. And for instance, here, Lori Pink is pretty much shot. You would wipe that off completely. Okay, so that wasn't a very long instruction, I know. But if you're a beginner, it's really important that you do clean your palette regularly. Um, at first, you may be using too much oil, and that's not uncommon. 
If that's the case, one of the things you need to do is clean your palette maybe once a week. But you will lose paint each time you paint. You know, a little bit of it will stay on the palette or on the palette knife. And so um, try to paint as dry as you can. And by that, I mean, dip your brush in your oil when you're painting, pat it off a couple of times to get it dry, but still have enough oil on there that you can pick up your paint. And that will also help to keep your palette clean. The final thing is anytime you leave, go out of the room even for a second, you should cover your palette and you should make sure that you're not getting dust on it while you're away from where you're seated. Alrighty, I hope these tips helped. Um, uh, pick up those brushes and keep painting and I will see you next time. I hope you enjoyed the program. And I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.